Amanda. Everyone calls me Granny. I want to hear it. I want to hear it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To get the pickled cauliflower started, I lived in Ohio next to my sister-in-law and brother-in-law. And my husband and him worked at the Chrysler products. So we had all these big shops from the Chrysler company coming to the house because my sister-in-law and, and her husband, they had a big bar in their new house. And they'd all come to the house, so we decided, me and her, hmm, let's make some kind of pickles so they can eat it when they drink their beer. So that's how we got the pickled cauliflower. We made it up and canned it, and the men loved it, so I've been making it ever since. For my kids to eat it with their beans, not beer. Well, to make the pickled cauliflower, you take and wash your cauliflower real good and tear off the little pieces of cauliflower, bite size, or ever how big you want it. And you put all of it in a, a pan. You put a tablespoon of alum and cover the cauliflower with water, ice water. Put a, I put a tube of ice in mine and let it sit for about two hours. And then you drain all that water off and rinse them a little bit and put it in a pot. Cover your cauliflower with vinegar and maybe one glass of water. A tablespoonful of sugar and probably a teaspoonful of salt. And then maybe a half a teaspoon of tunic. And then you Put it on the stove, let it come to a good boil. Put it in your jars with one stalk of hot pepper. And then fill it up with vinegar and put your seals on it and seal it up. It will last for two or three years. Okay, I looked at the signs, checked the signs to see what it was in the cannon. Cause you have to can in the signs. Do not can in the feet, or do not can in the, can in the bows. So the signs is good, so today we're going to can some pickled cauliflower. So now I'm going to start cutting it up, and I usually cut it up in kind of small pieces put them in, to put in the jar, about like that. Pull them apart and I wash them good. So now I've got it all washed and cut up, and I'm going to put it in my pan with some cold water, a teaspoonful of alum. Just cover it up good with water. I use alum to keep it so it will stay crisp when I can it. I like it crisp. And I'm going to put in a bag of ice so it stay good and cold. I want to set it on the cabinet. Cover it up with a clean dish cloth and let it set for about two hours. Okay, I'm getting ready to can the cauliflower. I put it in, wrenched it out real good. I put it in the pot. I poured vinegar over it till I got it all covered. And now I'm going to put A cup of uh, water that I put uh, a half a teaspoon of tumic in it. That's to cut the color a little bit. I'm 
I'm going to put a tablespoon of salt. Tablespoon of sugar. And I'm going to bring this to a good boil. I'm going to start putting it in my jar. How long did it boil? It just comes to a good rolling boil and then you put it in there. You don't let it boil on no, because it will uh, make your cauliflower soft. Make sure the vinegar is up over the cauliflower. Yeah. Put your seal and your ring on it. Turn it upside down till it seals. You're ready to go. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Granny's granddaughter. And me and Forrest are trying purple cauliflower. I'm gonna get a little one because it's hot. I'm gonna get a good big piece here. It's hot too. That's good. What's it taste like? Pickled cauliflower. And hot, a little sour. <laughs> really good. Really crunchy too. Yeah, it keeps its, you know, good texture. It's uh, good, good taste, good crunchy. Mm -hmm. We'll be adding now the four cups of cherries. One teaspoon of real butter. And one package of sugar gel. And let it cook till it starts to a full boil. It's two it boils. Before you put your sugar in, do not put your sugar in until this comes to a bowl. A full rolling bowl. A full rolling oil. It has to boil to it's a rolling bowl, but you can't stir it down. Okay. So, like, how right now? We can stir down the boil. Well, I mean, yeah, we can now. See. Okay, so we have to wait till we can't. We can't. Okay. Okay. And now I'll pour in the four and three fourths cups of sugar. And you have to stir it. Stir all this in together so it comes to another rolling bowl. Okay, so it's set the timer for one minute. Yes, and it will blow up for one minute. When the timer goes off, I'll put it in my jars. Okay. And always keep a stirred. It does. I 
And when we get all the jars filled, we will cover the top of it and let it sit till tomorrow. And then tomorrow, I will put a lid on them and put it in my freezer. It's not freezer jam, but I always keep my jellies in my jam, jams in the freezer. So when I take them out, it tastes like I just freshly made it. So what's the difference between our jam and freezer jam? You don't cook the freezer jam and it usually don't get as thick as the jam that you cook. And we like our stick. And what do you cover it with? A clean cloth. A clean towel till tomorrow. And then we seal it with a lid. Now we, did, we didn't pick our cherries ourselves. I had my son Mickey to pick, pick the cherries because he was tall enough to reach them and we walked. And now we've got enough left, we can have a peach cobbler tomorrow. Or a cherry cobbler tomorrow. What's the best way to touch the jars when you move them? Top of the lid, which is not hot. Top of the lid, so right there. Yes, now we got two, four, six, eight jelly jars of fresh, fresh cherry, cherry jelly. There's the jelly. All right. All right, we're gonna try some fresh cherry jelly that was made last week from some cherries that are right next door here. So, very delicious, we're gonna find out. You don't normally find cherry jelly and I've actually never eaten any. It's always blackberry or strawberry or grape and so I'm excited to try some cherry jelly. Very good. A little bit tart, but very tasty.